Okay, team, whenever you see a student using compound words or having difficulty with compound words in the first essay involving oral reading fluency, this is an opportunity to talk about a gap in structural word analysis. Because when we decode compound words, we're going to be using structural word analysis or morphemic analysis to break that word up into its base words and then blend it together. Like all these multi-syllable words, they all have, uh, they're all compound words. A compound word is a word that's made up of two base words, right? And these, ba when I say base word, I'm not saying root. I'm not saying a root. A base word is an, is a, listen closely, it's an everyday tier one word. So we think of tier one vocabulary, tier one vocab, right? It's an everyday word. Uh, these are the words that we want students to build up automaticity with. These are very tend to be tend tend to be very decodable words. Yes, and all these words are very decodable, and they're they're words that you know should be in that student's high frequency sight word vocabulary. So if a student were ever having difficulty with words like this, then we want to teach them how to take a word like this and break these words up um, into you know um, 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 their base words. You notice all these base words, they use basic phonics patterns, but, you know, so we could eventually build in, you know, a review of phonics, but it's mainly having them break the words up into book, bag, foot, ball, right? We wouldn't want to take a word like, let's say, um, star, uh, starfish or sun, sunshine, or st let's, let's do backpack. We wouldn't want them to take a word like backpack, right? You wouldn't want you wouldn't want to see them do this. B, a, k, a, ba, no, back, p, a, k, backpack. No, that's not how we teach how to how to decode the word backpack. We say, uh, hey, spot the sight word, the tier one words, back, and pack, and then blend them together, right? So, team. Often the essays, uh, you might see students have difficulty with compound words. If you ever did see them have difficulty with the compound words, then you would say um, it's frowny town involving structural word analysis. Can you remember that? This would mean that they, if, they had, if they were making lots of mistakes with compound words, then this would be an opportunity to talk about structural word analysis and think of an activity uh, involving structural word analysis that would be good for compound words. Now, the question that we just did before, this, this one right here, right? This is a great activity, but it's not really a great activity for compound words. This is a great activity involving like prefix, base, and suffix, right? Uh, here's an activity. Here's a question. We're going to do a question now that is a great activity for structural word analysis, specifically for compound words. Let's take a look. Everyone, I want you to take two minutes. I want you to read this one on your own. Go. Two minutes on your own. Let me read it with you. And this is, by the way, from an old test from the old 90, which is over 10 years old. So it's like totally unuseful, right? Like completely, you never use this on your test. It's like old news. Or is it the key to passing your test? I don't know. Let's see if there's any utility, any use in this question. This 10 year old question that should be retired. <laughs> A second grade teacher has, ha, has students put two single syllable nouns, ha, sorry, has students pull two single syllable nouns from a hat, parentheses, e dot g, uh, comma, bulb and light and ask them to form words by putting the words together. Uh, parentheses, uh, e.g, uh, dot comma, light bulb. Students then draw pictures to illustrate the new words and write short stories using the new words. This activity likely uh, is likely to be most effective for helping students, and then we have options. Now, team, in two sentences, what they just did they did a great job of describing an activity. I'm gonna circle that word activity. We've we've said that like an activity. It's like a, it's like a mini lesson, right? Uh, or another way of saying a mini lesson is like a learning uh, experience, right? 
Another way of saying a learning experience is an instructional strategy, right? So activity or a game. So these are things that we do in the classroom. Activities we do in the classroom, we call them activities or a, a mini lesson or an instructional strategy or a learning experience or a game. Well, on your essay, they're going to have you write instructional strategy. So let me just circle this activity and just let's rename it. This is a instructional, right? Strategy. It's an instructional strategy that you could use on your essay. And whenever you describe and whenever you put an instructional strategy on your essay, you always want to describe it. There's always a, a description piece. So let me write down describe, right? And in order to, when you're writing your essay, you always have to describe an instructional strategy. You got to do it in two or three sentences. Now, right now we have two awesome sentences, right? There's the first part where the teacher has students pull to, I love this, two single syllable nouns. I mean, I would never say that. I might just say pull two words, but you know what? This sounds better. Pull to single syllable nouns from a hat. And I like the use of e.g to give the example. So we always have a two to three sentence description and we always we always uh, have to cite some examples, cite or give uh, cite or give examples. So let me write down exa provide examples, right? At least one or two examples of what we're doing. So we give a description of the strategy in our in our essays at least two or three sentences, we, we cite some examples. They do a great job of citing an example. And then listen, we always, 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 always have to give a why. Explain why the instructional strategy is so helpful. It only needs to be one or two sentences. They do that here. Look at it closely. It says this activity is likely to promote, and this activity is likely to be most effective for helping the student with what? Visualization and comprehension? No. Phonics generalization? No. Context clues? No. This activity is likely to be most effective for helping students understand the concept of compound words. That's your why. So I'll say it again. In writing a mini instructional strategy, we always have a two or three sentence description of the mini lesson. We got to provide examples of the mini lesson like they did here with the bulb and light and light bulb. And then there's always, when, whatever you're doing, reading specialist, uh, beginner reader, whatever essay you're doing, you always have to give at least a one or two sentence reason why you're doing this activity. So this activity would help a student with um, um, promoting their understanding of uh, um, compound words. This is a great mini lesson for helping them with structural word analysis with compound words. Right? Team, this question is giving you the language for an instructional strategy if you ever saw students struggle with compound words, right? This is another activity, scenario, learning experience that would help a student with a structural word analysis. But this would be another activity that would be more appropriate for, let's say, a student that's having difficulty with like prefix, base, and suffix, right? This activity here is a instructional strategy to help a student involving phonics. Would you agree? So how it's help them with phonics. Um, this this uh, activity here, right? would be really helpful if you saw students struggle with high frequency sight word vocabulary involving prepositions. If you saw that, then you could do that activity there because that would be the appropriate strategy if you saw they're having difficulty with high frequency sight word vocabulary. Okay, team, so uh, we got one more to do in this set, but don't underestimate, uh, we got a couple more to do, but don't underestimate this stuff. These questions here are giving you the instructional strategies that you can put in your essays if you ever saw the students struggle with these specific ideas. Okay, don't underestimate the question. Tim, the answer is D. Lots of review of lots of ideas. And even though it's an old one, it's a good one. Now let's go to the next question. Okay.